my pen when I write it. <clears throat> the country lane slants uphill, racing an old barbed wire fence, both runners wending towards an unseen end. Spectator thistles stand lavenderly on the hill, each cheering on their favor, while the bluish clover does the same from the gutter on the other side. Other shrubs and sundry blossoms have no stake in this race. They merely enjoy the fanfare. Maiden weeds twirling in fresh green tresses. Fake barkers selling souvenir dandelion parasols. Scattering the wind like children chasing fireflies at dusk. story in the Bible about uh, Abraham and Isaac and the altar. This is kind of inspired by that. <clears throat> Suppose God had not stopped Abraham from lighting the altar on which Isaac was bound. Suppose Abraham, in his devotion to God, let the flesh of his son char and split and bleed. Would Isaac's scream be any different than the ram's that would have been sacrificed in his stead. How would this affect the many nations Abraham was supposed to sire? How would this affect his devotion to God, or the devotion of nations to come? God would still be the father of all things, beginning and the end. I think it likely every lamb offered unto him from then on would have a face, a face of innocence, perhaps stark with horrible enlightenment. Scriptures teach us we dare not look upon the face of God, for his wrath is terrible to behold, and we are meant to fear it. Fear him. Fear the loving God. But suppose Abraham had a test of his faith had been made to watch the last tatter of meat fall from his son's burning bones. He may have had more than reason than fear to turn away from the face of all creation. So might we.